Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 27. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So as of September 1st, 2022, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization of the entire asset class is coming in at a very modest 980 billion, with the fair value logarithmic regression trend line coming in at about 1.77 trillion. Now, this actually represents an undervaluation of approximately 45%. Now, if you remember back to 2020, or at least late 2020 and really early 2021, we, we got into the overvaluation phase and we spent oh, like over a year in the overvaluation phase we can also spend quite a long time in the undervaluation phase now i know the title of, of the video is for is bitcoin but remember this is of the entire asset class where the entire asset class is coming in at about 980 billion now the red line is a is what i call the fair value logarithmic regression fit and it's fit to all data it's not it's not biased to say non-bubble data, like some of the regression bands that I look at. It's not biased to peak data, like some of the other regression bands are, are, that I look at are. It is simply fit to all data points, and this is the fit that you get, the red line. So the whole idea is that it shows you the fair value of the asset class at any given time, and of course we go through phases of undervaluation and overvaluation. And right now, it obviously seems kind of ridiculous that the fair value could be 1.77 trillion. We were there not that long ago. And we could spend, if history is an indication, one or two years being undervalued before ultimately going back up. Now, don't let that discourage you from thinking that, you know, there's there's nothing to do in the cryptoverse. Even during this phase over here in, in late 2018, going into early 2019, I mean, this was like a 4x move for Bitcoin alone. Uh, a fairly substantial move. So just remember that the undervaluation phases are actually my favorite time in the cryptoverse because the tourists leave, we get we try to get rid of all the copycat projects that aren't doing anything except chasing trends in the bull market. And then we can try to focus on projects that are actually innovating and, and, and paving the way for the next bull run. So do not be discouraged by these times. They're necessary for eventually going into another bull run, okay? Now, when we talk about being undervalued by 45%, that sounds like a fairly decent amount to be undervalued by, right? Like if you're saying something's 45% undervalued with respect to the fair value, does that mean that the bias has to be back up to the fair value? Not necessarily. Remember, we could go even deeper undervalued, and in fact, historically, we typically do before we ultimately go back up to the fair value or up to a higher overvaluation phase. If you look at, at you know, what we've experienced over the last several years, um, you know, we've seen three major peaks, a couple of intermediate peaks, and this one arguably was um, really hit hard by the, by the deteriorating macro conditions that we now cover a lot on this channel to try to help us better understand the cryptoverse um, by keeping tabs on other things. So regardless, you can see that, you know, we, we go through overvaluation phases where we things are really crazy. We also go through phases where no one really wants to be in crypto, right? And, and all the tourists leave. Now, if you take the percent difference between the, the total market cap and the fair value, and this is going to go back to being 45% undervalued, what does it mean? If you take the percent difference, this is what you get, right? And you look at this chart, and you can make a few observations in that it's generally decreasing in terms of the peaks and what they're able to accomplish with respect to the extension from the fair value. But the undervaluation, at least in the last two bear markets, went down to about 65 to 70% undervalued before we really kicked off another bull market. Now, a couple of things here. The first thing is that if you look back to 2012, this was sort of the area that we we bottomed at, right? This was. I mean, it, it just is what it is, right? We did spend, you know, a while here, right? Half a year or so, maybe more in this range before ultimately blasting back off. But furthermore, if you look to 2015, 2016, and then 2018 and 2019, you'll see that eventually we went down to about 65% undervalued. Now, there's a caveat with this, and I, I, I try to make this point in every video, 
Um, but it, it, it's not necessarily the most intuitive, so I need to explain something. For those who, who remember late 2018, the asset class of crypto went down quite a bit, right? I mean, it, it went down um, to, to, to really less than 100 billion. But in March of 2020, we didn't go down below 100 billion, at least not on the daily time frame. Maybe we had some hourly wicks. I don't know where it got exactly, but on the daily time frame, it, it wasn't nearly that low. But then why was it more undervalued then? Remember, it's the percent difference between the market cap and the fair value. Here, it wasn't even, we weren't even down to the lower progression line. Okay, here we were. So the reference point, again, monotonically increases. Therefore, even though we were not as under, even though we were not at, a, at as low of a market cap over here in late 2018, because another year and a half had passed, or maybe 15, 16 months, the fair value had increased so much that simply going back near 100 billion was enough to get us all the way down to being undervalued by about 65%. Now, on the other hand, if you look at 2015 and 2016, we sort of just went straight down to being undervalued by about 65%, right? We didn't really waste any time. We went down pretty quickly and, and we just got down to being undervalued by that amount and we sort of just went sideways, right? We just sort of went sideways for a long time um, into this into this green band, right? At, at about 65% undervaluation and then we, we came back up, right? So down sort of sideways slowly into it, and then we just sort of stay down here at around 60, 65% undervaluation. Now, right now, 65% undervaluation would cause Bitcoin and the entire asset class as a whole to drop a few hundred billion more from where it currently sits. I mean, we'd have to go down to like the 500 to 600 billion dollar range. As crazy as that sounds, as scary as that might be, that's where we would need to be in order for us to be about 65% undervalued. Another way to consider it, though, is to say, well, if we went sideways into it like we did in 2018, then and we just sort of, you know, played in the sandbox for a year or so, then by the end of 2023, the current value would actually get us to being undervalued by 65 percent. Right. So there's clearly two different paths we can take to getting undervalued by 65 percent. We could go straight down to it or we could go sideways for a long time until we get into that area. Now, again, there's no magic thing about being 65% undervalued. I'm just saying what has historically happened, and it would suggest that ultimately the asset class could go lower from where it currently is, all right? And if you've watched any of my videos over the last you know, eight or nine months, we've talked about how you know, you know, these bear markets can be very brutal. Um, if you're new to crypto in say 2020 or 2021 and you've never experienced a bear market, you know, welcome aboard. They're not fun, okay? And a lot of these rallies just get sold off. And by the end of it, it, it feels like it's never going to go back up and, and everyone leaves. And then usually everyone leaves right when they right when they should be getting in into the market. Um, but I would, I would encourage you to just try to exercise some patience, just stick around for a few years. Uh, likely the people that stick around will be, will be pleasantly surprised, even if there has to be more pain to come first. So just remember that, and, and hopefully when we get to, you know, the beauty of mathematics part 47, we'll, ha we'll be in much better times again. But anyways, I, I wanted to remind you that ultimately we're, we, we hope to go to approximately 10 trillion, right? And this is going to depend on, on the macro conditions. I hope we can make it there during the next bull run, uh, but we, we need to keep an eye on inflation. I don't want it to get into like a, a high inflationary decade. That could... Um, you know, if, if, if inflation sticks around for a few years, I do think that could affect the ultimate heights that we could go to during the next bull run. But ultimately, I, I do hope that we can make it to $10 trillion for the entire asset class. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.